I want to do first is we finished chapter one, but we never did any problems in section six. So I want to do that today is go over some problems that you may have in chapter six, uh, section six, chapter one. Here, let's see. Here's the first one. Solve the following equation. And I want you to put the answer in all three notations. It is important, treat inequalities just like equal signs. Treat it exactly the same way. So if you had this, if this was an equal sign instead, what would you do first? Okay, how? What you, in this case, we have X on both sides. So move smaller X to larger X, right? Yes. But if, actually, even though it's not there, what you would want to do first is get rid of any parentheses first. Get rid of parentheses, combine like terms, and then move the x to one side. But since we don't have any parentheses. So we move the 4x. How? Nope. We, we have to have the x's on one side first. Nope. Subtract 4x from both sides. We, we, we want to move this entire number to the other side. So these cancel, so we have negative three, less than seven minus four is three X. Okay, we have all the X's on one side. What's next step? Move all non-x's to the other side. Because you want x's on one side, everything else on the other side. So which one do we move? Six. Minus six both sides. Okay, they're both negative, so the answer is negative. Six plus three is nine. And then solve for x. Divide both sides by 3. So the answer is 9, nine divided by 3 is 3. This is the right answer, but it's not the easiest to work with. It's always easier if your X is on the left-hand side. So if we put the X on this side and the negative three on this side, what happens to this inequality sin? It flips. 
because it has to keep on pointing to that negative three. So here's our answer. What notation is this? <laughs> yeah, see, that's a tough question there. It's one down. It has to be set. Yeah, because it's not a graph. Yes, yeah, so that was a 50 50 shot. Good try. This is set notation. So we have to put it in interval and graphing notations. How do we do that? Word advice. It's whenever you convert from set to, to interval notation, it's always easier to go through graphing first. So let's do the graph. The only number we have is a negative three. Is it an open or closed circle? Why? Because of the equal sign, exactly. So we can use negative three. Because X is on the left-hand side, the arrow tells us what side we shade. It says shade to the right. These are all your X's. And it goes to what number? Infinity. The reason this is easier, because now for the interval, this is the graph. For the interval notation, you just use the beginning and the end numbers. Do you use a bracket or a parenthesis for th negative three? It's a bracket because it's a line under here, so we need a line down here, and it's included. And infinity is always parenthesis. Voila. Again, it's always easier. Even if we went from interval to set, it's always easier to go to the graphic notation. So you see what's going on. This one tells me that X is to the right. So X is bigger than negative three. So always. All right, let's look at another one. Good morning. We do the same thing here. All of these you're gonna you're gonna find in all three notations. So you have it in set notations. First thing you have to do is move the smaller x to the larger. Negative six is smaller because on a number line, negative six is further to the left than negative two. So this is a smaller number. So I move it over. Add six to both sides. Six is bigger, so it's positive. Six minus two is four. Then move all the non-x's to the other side. So we have to subtract five from both sides. That gives us 4x is greater than negative, negative, they're both negative, so the answer is negative. 5 plus 4 is 9. 4x is greater than negative 9. Divide by 4, and we have x is greater than negative 9 fourths. This is in set notation. To convert it to interval notation, we go through the graphic first. So we start with a number, negative 9 fourths. It's an open circle because there's no equals. You can't use it. And the arrow points, as long as X is to the left, the arrow points to the right. So that's a shaded region. And it goes to infinity. So our interval notation starts at that number, ends at that number, and they're both parentheses. Now, if you didn't move the smaller to the larger, if you move the larger to the smaller, like we added two X to both sides, negative six, Plus two, negative six is bigger, so the answer is negative. Six minus two is four. This negative sign changes everything for us. 
we have negative in front of the x. So we have to change that eventually. So we have to get rid of the negative 4 first. So we add 4 to both sides. 5 plus 4 is 9. Is greater than negative 4x. Now, when you change the sign of x, x right now is negative. When you change the sign of x, you change everything. The numbers change signs, and the inequality changes the direction. So this positive 9 becomes a negative 9. This greater than becomes a less than. And the negative 4 becomes a positive 4. That takes care of all the changes for us. All we have to do now is divide by 4. And again, it's easier if x to the left, so we flip the entire equation. The arrow still has to point to negative 4, 9 over 4. So x is greater than negative 9 fourths. And because it's x is to the left, the shaded region goes to the right. Now let's do this one. What notation is this? <laughs> interval, yes. This is interval. So again, the well, we, best thing to do here is to always go to graphing first. Our small number is negative 3. And our big number is 9. Is negative 3 an open circle or a closed circle? It's closed because it's a bracket. And 9 it's a parenthesis, so it's open. And x has to be between there. So that pretty much writes up our set notation. Because we have negative 3 is less than x is less than 9. Except that now we can include that one, so we put an equal sign. And there you have it. That's why if you go from... Any, any any of these forms to graphing, it pretty much writes your answer for you. Let's look at the next question. Here's a graphing form, example four. Let's look at the easiest one from this would be the interval notation. This one goes to the left from four. It goes to negative infinity. This one goes to the right from nine, so it goes to positive infinity. Interval notation, you have the beginning and the end of each of these intervals. You can never get to infinity, so it's always always a parenthesis. Four solids, so it's a what kind? Bracket or parenthesis. And on here, we have nine to infinity. And it's open, so it's a parenthesis. To combine these, since we're doing interval notation, we put a U. The set notation deals with inequalities. Remember, the shaded region is your x. x, it's shaded to the left, so it points to the left, and it goes to 4. So it can equal 4. x goes to the right, and from 9. Again, the shaded region tells you which direction it points. 
and this uses the word or. That's all there is to it. That's how come it's easier when you have X's on the left-hand side. If X is to the left, this is shaded going that way, I use that arrow. If it's going this way, I use that arrow. Any questions so far? Now let's do an easy one. Yeah. These are called tripartite. They have three parts. We're solving for X, right? So the only thing we're worried about is this middle, where the only place that has an X. Whatever we do to this middle part, we have to do to the outsides also. Because remember, treat the inequalities like equal signs. Our first step is to get rid of the two. We subtract two from all three parts. They're both negative, so 3 plus 2 is 5. 4x, 9 minus 2 is 7. We only look at the middle. There's a 4 in front of the x, so we have to get rid of it. So we divide by 4, all three parts. And there's our answer in set notation. The graphic notation, the graphic part, again, we have our endpoints. We have negative 5 over 4, and we have 7 over 4. This is the beginning, this is the end. X is in the middle. Open or closed on negative 5 fourths? Closed. It's closed because it's equals. And that's inequality, so it's open. And X is in the middle. That's your X. And interval notation Just put your beginning and your end with a comma in the middle. Since it's a solid dot, it's a bracket, open circle, printing. There you have it. What do y'all think? Difficult or getting easier? All right, let's look at a little bit more complex ones. Believe it or not, this one's a little bit more difficult. First thing is, what do we do? Minus three, because we're, we're only looking at this, whatever we do here, we do everywhere else. So we get rid of the three first. 
So we minus three across the board. They're both negative. Keep the sign, add the numbers. Negative five X. 13 minus three is 10. There's a negative in front of the X. So we change everything. This negative five becomes a positive five. This less than equal to becomes greater than equal to. This negative 5x becomes a positive 5x. This less than becomes a greater than. This 10 becomes a negative 10. Change the size. It makes it much easier to do that than worry about, because if you just divide by negative 5, you may forget to do the flipping of the signs of the inequalities. And if you do that, you just ruin your answer. Next step. Divide by five, because we we'll get x by itself, so we divide by five. Five divided by five is one. X, only one negative, 10 divided by five is two. It's the right answer, but in the wrong order. Because remember, always read left, right, should be the smallest number. So we got to flip this whole thing. So the negative 2 comes here. It's got a point to the negative 2. The x stays in the middle. It's got a point to the x and 1. So we got to flip the whole equation. What notation is this? Set notation. Very good. So we put it into graphic next. So here's our low end is negative two. Our high end is positive one. Everything in the middle is your X. Negative two, open or closed? open because it's just there's no line underneath it so it's open and that means this one since it has a line it has to be closed and this is the graph the low number comma the high number open is a parenthesis closed is a bracket and this is interval Everybody okay with this? Let me ruin your morning. There. <laughs> Let's keep on. So what do I have to do here? I have fractions, inequalities, and x's. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the fractions. And that's a five step process. What's the first step? Very good. Find the LCD. Does anybody know how to find the LCD? And may not know. I mean, I don't mind going over, go over it. Let's okay, let's do that. Let's find the LCD. Let's show how. I like to explain it using what I call the factor box. These are my denominators. My denominators are five. Four, 
and two. I put those down there. Five is made up of just five times one. Four is made up of what? Two times two. Two is made up of just two times one. So that's what they all have. This is what I need to make them all equal. This one has a five. Does this one? No. So it needs a five. Does this one have a five? No, so I need a five. This one has a two. Does this one? Yes. Does this one? No, it needs a two. This one has two twos. This one needs another two. This one needs another two. It's what I have and what I need. This is my LCD. Five. Multiply this times this, and you get that. So 5 times 2 is 10, times 2 is 20. 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20. 2 times 5 is 10, times 2 is 20. So L my LCD is 20. Actually, th this little box does a lot more than just that. So this other, look at these numbers we have here. They're going to play an important point role in this next part. So what do we do with the LCD? Right, Multi multiply each, very good, multiply each term by the LCD. In other words, just put the 20 out in front, in, in front of everybody. So it's over in front of the three fifths, in front of the one fourth, in front of the three over two X, and in front of the three. I put it in front of, of everything. Like ketchup. I love ketchup. I put ketchup on everything almost. Third step. After you multiply each, each term by the LCD, Reduce. In other words, five goes into 20 how many times? Four goes into 20 how many times? Two goes into 20. 10. And there's another. So what I have now is four times three is less than five times one minus 10 times three X so far so good remember I told you the need column keep an eye on those because the when the denominator was five I could have just erased the five and just put a four in front of it, two times two. I could erase the four and put a five in front of it. I can erase the two and put a 10 in front of it. That's what this, this thing here could speed up the whole process. Whatever's in front of here is going to be what's left over after everything's said and done. Step four, multiply to get rid of the parentheses. 
four times three is 12. Five times one is five. Negative times positive is negative. 10 times three is 30, X. 20 times three is 60. Two times three is six with a zero. And then solve for X. My first step in the solving process, what do I do first? Minus five, very good. Twelve minus five is seven. The fives cancel. Negative thirty x. Sixty minus five is fifty five. I have a negative in front of the x. So I've got to change everything. This positive seven becomes a negative seven. The less than becomes greater than. The negative 30 becomes positive 30. The less than becomes greater than. The 55 becomes negative 55. So I change everything. Next step, we're trying to get x by itself, so I have to get rid of 30. How? Divide each term by 30. We have negative 7 over 30. Can these simplify? 55 and 30? They both have a what in common. They both have a 5. How many times does 5 go into 55? How many times is 5 going to 60 or 30? <laughs> that was not a surprise. So are we done? Why not? We got to flip it because right now it's backwards. So we got to put the negative 11 over 6 here. Arrow's got to point to it. And we've got to point to the x, negative 7 over 30. There is your set notation. Our graph. We have this, the lower number is negative 11 over 6. And the upper number is negative 7 over 30. And x is between there. And since both of them are inequalities, they're both open circles. There's no line underneath it, no equals. Negative 11 over 6, comma, 7, negative 7 over 30. They're both parentheses. And that's my integral notation. That's inequalities. That ends, that's, I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure it's all of it for chapter one. 
I don't, I don't know if we have any quality, absolute values or not in yet, but I'll look. But that pretty much should give you a good jump on what to do this weekend. So I want to begin just a quick part of chapter two. More on math. Section one deals with increasing, decreasing, or constant functions. It also deals with something that I call maxima or minima. What we're going to do here is define, if I give you a graph that looks like this, and I said and it goes on forever. Where in this graph is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? We have to first define what is increasing. How do we know if a function is increasing? What does it look like graphically? It's going up. So we know if it has a positive slope, it's going up, right? So here's the easiest one we look at, a line. That's an increasing line, isn't it? We know because if we put our pen here and start going to the right, because X is always increasing, the line is going higher and higher and higher and higher. So it's an increasing graph. We have a point on the line right there. That's x1, y1. We have another point here. That point is x2, y2. Mathematically, we can define a graph is increasing a graph is increasing if as x1 is less than x2 then y1 is less than y2. And that's what this picture tells us. x1 is less than x2. y1 is below y2, so y1 is less than y2. That means from this point, to this point, I have to go up. It's an increasing line. So this is the test we have to do for increasing. As long as our X's are increasing and our Y's are getting bigger, then it's an increasing graph. Oops, I'm sorry, that dog copied that. A decreasing graph has a slope that's negative. It looks like this. You notice x1 is always going to be less than x2 because x is always increasing function. 
But here, y1 is greater than y2. If y1 is greater than y2, then the graph is going down. As x1 is less than x2, then y1 is greater than y2. These two points, are they increasing or decreasing? Are they going up or going down if I graph them without graphing them? So the first thing you have to do is look at, put the smaller x, which one's smaller, negative three or negative seven? So we have negative seven, six. So this is this x is smaller than this x. So compare the y's. Is this y bigger or lower than the second y? It's bigger. So then the y1 is bigger than y2. So these two dots, if we graph them, would be going down. So you put them in order. Or if you want it, if you if you don't see it graphically, then put it in the slope equation. If you put it in the slope equation, you'll get a negative slope. So th that's how you define increasing decreasing. Let's look at the picture I gave you first. Until when you finish writing. Let's look at this one. So where is this graph? increasing where is it decreasing remember increasing is we're looking at it going left and right it's going up so if we start over here is the graph increasing or decreasing it's increasing because it's going up as as x goes this way the graph is going up so it's increasing from where? From negative infinity to that point, to negative one. And in increasing, decreasing, you always put parentheses. There's never a bracket in increasing, decreasing functions. What's happening from negative one to three? Is it going up or down? It's going down, so it's decreasing from negative one to three. What's it doing from three to infinity? It's increasing. So we go from three to infinity, it's increasing. You notice we only put the X values in here. There, there's no need to put Y values. We only want to know where, what is the domain that the graph is increasing or decreasing? Domain equals the x-axis. So we know that the x values from negative infinity to negative one, it's increasing. From negative one to three, it's going down. And then, so far so good? What about these two guys? What are those called? Because it's at those two points, it's neither going up or down. At these two points, the slope is zero. Those are called vertices. This one, since it's the highest of this little range, in Latin, 
highest or the biggest means it's a maxima at that point. Maxima means maximum means the greatest. So what would this one be down here? What's the opposite of maximum? Minimum. So this one would be the minima. It's the lowest point in our curve, in our small range. So increasing graphs, x1 is always less than x2, y1, y2. But if I gave you some points on a graph, how can we determine that that point's a maximum minimum without graphing it? Let's look at, if it's a maxima, remember the slope is zero here. This is a maximum. Let's say this happens at the number A or A. What is the slope to the left of A of the graph? Is it going up or down? If it's going up, that means the slope is positive. If it's going down, that means the slope is negative. So if you have a point and the slope to the left of it is positive and the slope to the right is negative, that means it's a maximum. Because it's going up here and it's going down here. Same thing there. The slope is zero. So to the left of it, what is the slope? Is it positive or negative? Yeah, to the left of it, the slope is negative. It's going down. Bless you. And on the right, it's going up. So it's positive. So again, if you think of a roller coaster, if if you start off from the station and you start going, it's going up, so it's a positive slope. Then all of a sudden you get to the very top, it lets you go, you go down. It's exactly what same thing with math. So it's a positive slope, that means you're going up, negative slope, you're going down. And then on this side, you're going down. All of a sudden, you come back up. So we'll start looking at examples of that next week. So right now, what you guys got to do is finish up chapter one, take the test, and see how well you do. Try, just try to keep you on pace so, so we don't fall too far behind. All right. So all right, that is all that we have for this week.